second season. We are here to bring you more reports about pro wrestling here on the road to WrestleMania. My name is Nick Hausman. This is my associate, Darren Fentress, and we have all of the things that you want to hear on the uh, world of uh, professional wrestling. Yeah, and if you like what you, what you hear tonight, please follow us on Twitter at OTP Wrestling. Follow us on Facebook at OTP Wrestling. Yes, and you can also engage in the chatter that we are having by commenting on those things. We had uh, one person comment uh, last week. We had a few viewers. We're looking to maximize the amount of viewers that we had. Last week, we had 50 views on our video. This week, we are going for 100 YouTube views on our video. We are not going to stop this week until we get 100 views on our YouTube video. And we are going to give you people everything you want just so you keep watching this video. To start us off, we're going to do our opening traditional segment. Darren, what is that? It's the Raw Roundup. Yeehaw! And then there should be a pony sound effect. And now... We are here at the OTP ranches. You can see behind us there is ranching going on. There are cattle being driven and they are dictating the pace of where these cows are going. And right now we're going to dictate the pace of this conversation. We're going to dictate to you exactly what we thought about this week's Raw episode. So Darren, start us off. Where did Raw go this week? Top of the show we get CM Punk coming down to the ring to refute statements made by Chris Jericho last week. We, we, we didn't really care too much for Jericho bringing in the whole dad angle. Punk, your dad was an alcoholic. But here we go. We're, it's on the road to WrestleMania. We're going to deal with it. It's already been established. Punk comes out and says, look, I'm proud of my dad. My dad has overcome his addictions. And the tattoos across me, uh, they say straight edge. And I believe in that. And that's a good thing. All right, so Jericho comes on the Jumbotron. He's not actually at the arena. He's live via satellite and, and comes on and says, you know what, I'm sorry about everything I said about your dad. Not going to happen again. I won't mention your dad anymore on Raw, but your sister has drug problems. And that's where this took a turn for the better or for the worse, depending on how the way you look at it. You know, I like that they are upping the stakes in the Chris Jericho CM Punk feud. I like that Jericho is bringing a little bit more realism to this feud as a whole. What I don't like is how forced this feels. It's a, a rehash of a Ring of Honor storyline. I mean, uh, Punk was known to do this with Raven back in ROH, just like he was known to do with the Summer of Punk where he kidnapped the ROH title, like uh, translated over at SummerSlam. They're rehashing a lot of ROH storylines for Punk to make him look good, and I feel like this was just a storyline that was forced and not something that occurred naturally, and that's what brings me a little bit out of what's going on right now. Very contrived is this uh, particular feud going on right now, and to me, this should be about the WWE Championship. This should be about the title. And and and, and in this whole mix, none of, nothing at WrestleMania is really about the titles. No one really cares about the titles except to take Daniel Bryan's title away from him, which Sheamus more than likely will do given the streak he's on. Back to Punk yeah, Jericho. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that later. Um, the bottom line was this was an opening segment to just add a little fuel to the fire. We've got another week to see where they build to. It could go any which way of Sunday. And for us personally, I don't want to speak on behalf of Darren, but I think I know how we both feel. It didn't do enough to get me so engaged in this match. I think it's going to be a great match. I think they're going to have an actual, excellent, excellent uh, bout. I think it's going to be an awesome match. But the build-up to it has been a little bit uh, less than it would be desired. Absolutely. You're looking two of the top stars in wrestling today, Chris Jericho and CM Punk. I think these two have put on some of my favorite matches over the past few years, and I'm really looking forward to what they can put together at WrestleMania. This whole storyline angle seems forced, doesn't need to happen. All right, well, let's move along here. Uh, after the uh, opening bout with Punk and Jericho, we had uh, Big Show versus Kane, an interesting bout with uh, Cody Rhodes uh, on the outside doing commentary. Before the match even began, Cody Rhodes came out and he did a uh, best of for Big Show's embarrassing moments at WrestleMania. Uh, and then he uh, put on boxing gloves uh, afterwards. Uh, well, I mean, the match. Well, yeah, I mean, let's talk about the match a little bit. Sure, okay, so sure, we got jumping. Big Show and Kane going on. Uh, you know, very short match following this, but it ends with a really cool segment to where uh, Kane actually gets Big Show from the top ropes and does a choke slam from the top ropes, which is really cool. Good, good victory for Kane going nice on the road to WrestleMania. Nice visual, sure. Uh, you know, Kane's facing Randy Orton at WrestleMania, so obviously we want to see him get more, more momentum going into WrestleMania. Big Show facing Cody Rhodes. It's, this whole story is about Big Show 
me not so great at WrestleMania. Right, and I, I think that the antagonism of Cody Rhodes is building up very well right now. You really want to see this guy get punched in the face, and that's Big Show's finisher. He's got a big old fist, he's got a big old body, and who's to say that this isn't the match this year that's going to be a little bit of a squash? Who's to say that once Big Show and Cody Rhodes get in the ring, Big, uh, big Show doesn't take his big old fist, uh, apply that weapon of mass destruction, and lay Cody Rhodes out? I could very easily see that happening. I hope it don't. I would, uh, I would love to see Cody Rhodes carry this title past WrestleMania. I think he's been an amazing Intercontinental Champion. But it seems to be, again, a kind of one-sided build to WrestleMania where it seems apparent that Big Show's going to win this match, just like it seems kind of apparent that Randy Orton's going to win a match with Kane. Well, and you look at Big Show's career as of late, and here's the thing. He doesn't need a title around his waist to be the Big Show. He doesn't need a title around his waist to be a menacing presence in the ring, to be a threat to anyone on the roster. So I can't see them really putting the Intercontinental title around his waist. You know what, though? We're going to get more into WrestleMania predictions next week on our armchair booking segment where we're going to outline the entire road to WrestleMania, the entire WrestleMania card. Yes, yeah, so if you can't tell or not, Dar Darren and I are this week are trying to bite our tongues a little bit, giving away our full predictions for WrestleMania. We're trying to cover the brass taxes of what's going on this week in wrestling. And next week, we're going to open up that Pandora's box on what it is that our idea is that should be happening at WrestleMania. But right now, let's continue to do with the Raw Roundup. Uh, next up, we had David Otunga versus Santino Morella. We have the captain of Team Laurinaitis and David Otunga versus the captain of Te uh, Team Teddy Long and Santino Morella. And uh, what did you make of this match, Darren? I thought it was uh, kind of a fluff filler match, not much to talk about. Well, uh, I think the most interesting thing to point out in this match is Dave Otunga gaining a lot of momentum on this road to WrestleMania. Here's a guy who, aside from being two-time tag team champions, once with John Cena, once with Michael McGillicuddy, here we have this guy who otherwise has just gotten buried in WWE programming. Isn't a whole lot of fun to watch per se, but his new lawyerist kind of angle is gaining a lot of traction, and he's a big guy. Well, that's the thing that I wanted to point out was uh, when Santino Morella came out to the ring, he actually had uh, abs drawn onto his chest so that he would <laughs> look more down. muscular so that he could uh, pose down with David Otunga. I thought it was a nice Entertaining. Touch. Entertaining yeah, segment. Again, I don't want to cover too much of this match, but I did think it was interesting how... Actually, I didn't even think it was interesting. I thought it was just a thing that happened between Santino and David Otunga. It was more fluff. It was more filler. I really don't have too much to say about this. Uh, David Otunga went over... And, uh, and we keep building to this uh, Well, I'll, I'll say two quick things about it. Santino Morella, every time you pull out your Cobra, you seem to lose. It's like as soon as the Cobra comes out, that means the end is near for you, usually. Uh, secondly, post-match, we've got uh, Teddy Long smacking John Laurinaitis, which I thought was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, it was just a, it was capitulation of the pure, uh, the week prior where he just flipped Teddy La or, uh, John Laurinaitis over in his chair. You know, it was more of the same. Again, this was just more of the same. I don't think anything was accomplished in this match. Uh, well, I think we're looking forward to perhaps a Teddy Long versus John Laurinaitis match that's a real match. Oh, great. I mean, that, that could actually Two happen. Two old men fighting over nothing. Uh, they're fighting. How many times have we said that before? Oh, I'm sorry. When we were watching TNA, when Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan were at their pinnacle there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're or, right. Let's or, be more like TNA. Let's have two old men fight over nothing. Let's let's ignore all of our young talent that's up and coming, all those people that deserve to have championships, deserve to be making names for themselves. Let's replace it with Teddy Long and John Laurinaitis. That sounds like a great fucking idea. All right, so next on the card, we had Daniel Bryan versus Zack Ryder. Uh, sure. Uh, this was uh, the Ryder Revolution this week. Uh... Tonight in Philadelphia, or actually today in Philadelphia, out in front of the, uh, I think it was the Wells Fargo building, a, a bank building of some kind, where uh, Ryder was holding a, a rally to try to get himself onto the WrestleMania card. He wanted had to be part a very of, big crowd with him. He wanted to be part of Team Laurinaitis, which I think you already know my feelings on that match. Um, Team Laurinaitis, Team Long? Uh, Team, Team Long. He wanted to be part of uh, Team, Lo sense. Team Long versus Team Laurinaitis. He wanted to be part of Team Long and... Uh, so tonight, uh, to try to prove himself, he went up against uh, D. Bryan, Daniel Bryan. How did that fare for him? Not so well. Uh, uh, Daniel Bryan really shines in this match. Zack Ryder does get a couple good moments in there. Just a real good drive-by kick in the corner. Uh, that thing uh, uh, that MVP used to do that Zack Ryder now does. It's called the drive-by. Yeah. Drive-by, yeah. of course. Uh, but long and short of it is Daniel Bryan whoops some Ryder ass. And that's exactly what I'd expect right now. 
to be honest, and I, and I said it last week, I'm going to say it this week, Raw gets a little predictable these days on the road to WrestleMania. When you got your mid-carters going up against your main eventers, main eventers always seem to win over the mid-carters. So it's a little predictable on that end. Yeah, and this was, again, another little fluff bit of filler to keep you on your uh, the edge of your toes. But not a bad match, though, in and of not, itself. Not, like, not who a... would expect Zack Ryder to beat Daniel Bryan? Yeah, but I'm not going to call it a good match. It's too short to be considered a good match. Again, just like you said, this was filler on the road to WrestleMania. It made Daniel Bryan look good. Made us an, uh, wait another week to see Zack Ryder added to Team Teddy Long. And on to who's the next, gonna get it? Who's gonna get it? On to the next segment. We're here at the 9 o'clock hour. So at the 8 o'clock hour, we had CM Punk and Jericho. This week at the 9 o'clock hour, I call that the CM Punk hour. The last few uh, months, they've been putting CM Punk at the 9 o'clock hour. This week at the 9 o'clock hour, we get John Cena versus Mark Henry. And uh, John Cena obviously looking to look, uh, you know, build up some momentum. Look very strong as he uh, rolls onto the road to WrestleMania against The Rock. A much more competitive bout than I was expecting. There was actually a commercial break during this bout, um, and as they came back, Mark Henry was still on the move. He was actually putting the boots and the uh, bear hugs and the uh, chokeholds to uh, John Cena for the better part of this bout. Mark and then Henry looked really good throughout this match. I was really surprised and happy to see it. Mark Henry... I'm really glad you got to be the world champion for a long time this year, and well, last year. Uh, regardless, Cena does end up getting the win, as expected, with an AA. Very impressive to put Mark Henry into an AA. Uh, but at the end of this match, a little post-match angle, The Rock, who we saw a little bit earlier cutting a promo in front of the Rocky statue. Yes, we didn't talk about that. We didn't true. talk about that. Don't care. Do we need to talk about it? Uh, I like The Rock. I like what he's doing. I like every promo you give. All right. But Rock comes down. He said he's going to make a statement tonight in front of John Cena. Make a statement to John Cena. All he does is come and take John Cena's scraps after a grueling bout with Mark Henry and give Mark Henry a rock bottom. Well, to me, that doesn't make any statement. I just did all the work. He was laying there in the ring for you. You came down and gave a rock bottom, and that's supposed to impress me. If I'm John Cena, I'm not impressed. Well, if you if you know your history, you know that Mark Henry and The Rock are in the Nation of Domination. Mm. They are in a stable together, and I feel that by The Rock, We're rock bottom and Mark Henry, he's too. saying to John Cena, I will rock bottom my friend, my brother, a member of the Nation of Domination, and I will do that to you as well. Do you know what I'm saying? You're talking about the it like Na the Nation of Domination still exists. I, I think it still does exist. I mean, Ron <laughs> Simmons, D'Lo Brown, they all talk together. They all hang out in social circles. I think it's only fair to assume that Dwayne The Rock Johnson was trying to send a message to the Nation of Domination that I will not have to be friends with you people to do what I need to do, and that is beat John Cena. I think at the end of the day, this whole angle has been about the nation of domination. <laughs> and I don't know. NOD for life. Yes, and if you don't agree with that, then you can uh, tweet us at OTP Wrestling. You can <laughs> Facebook us at OTP Wrestling. On to the next segment, we have Miz versus Sheamus. Who do you think won? Uh, at the top of this whole segment, we've got Miz in the ring again saying. I should be on the WrestleMania card. He's talking about King Kong Bundy going from the main event at WrestleMania 2 to being in a filler match at WrestleMania with 3. Two, with two little people. And, sa and says that was the worst decline in history until now. Okay, so he offers an open challenge to prove himself to be worthy for Team Laurinaitis. Now comes Sheamus. And who do you think won? Wild guess. I mean, Sheamus has been on a roll, yes. and Sheamus continues that roll tonight. Quick match, bro kick to the face. I think that they're setting up Miz to do a run-in in the Rock Cena match where he runs in, tries to cause some controversy. Rock and Cena both kick him out of the ring, and that's his segment at WrestleMania. <laughs> oh, that, I, I think that's worth I think that'd be a brilliant use of the Miz at WrestleMania, and by the way, that puts you in the main event. Yeah, it puts him in the main event, and it keeps him strong. Uh, and you, and then Miz gets to brag about it all the next year. I, I was in two main events. I just, back I, to back you know, you know, like you said about Daniel Bryan versus Zack Ryder, this was another fluff filler match to get over their competitor and Sheamus, you know, just like Daniel Bryan, to make him look Seeing strong. Seeing a trend here, anybody? Uh, and uh, they made him look stronger to WrestleMania. After this, we have uh, Orton and Matthews Corner. Uh, you coined the term <laughs> Matthews, Matthews Corner. Matthews Corner, yes. We get an old school promo from the top of the ramp. 
facing away from the big Titan Tron out to the stage and out to the audience. It, it felt like mid 90s all over again with Mean Gene Okerlund interviewing people like uh, Ultimate, Ultimate Warrior, Warrior Papa, Papa Shango. Shango. Yeah, yeah, those are the two I was actually thinking. And, well, it felt like that Papa Shango bit where he was up on the uh, stage and, and he started and bleeding. He started bleeding from I don't head. know why we both thought that because it actually was, it was very memorable. Nothing like memorable. that segment, but it, it, you know, it was the same camera angle as that segment. Uh, it's basically just Orton saying, you know, you ask me how I'm going to defeat Kane. You should be asking, how's Kane to defeat me? Uh, he uses terms like the big red machine, the big red monster, the devil's uh, favorite demon. But my name is Randy Orton. End segment. It's done. I, well, I, and like, I, I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to be maybe too trepidatious with my predictions. But um, perhaps Randy Orton knows that this is the end of the road for him. Maybe the doctors came to him and they said, "You've had one too many concussions. You've been injured one too many times." This could be your last WrestleMania match, just like with Edge. He beats Kane, and he comes back a month later, and he says, Guys, I can't do this anymore. That was my big victory moment. I beat Kane at WrestleMania. I am also out. <laughs> I really hope that isn't the case. I, I mean, mean, he's had so many concussions. It's not so uh, unbelievable to think that maybe this is Ran Randy Orton's last hurrah, and this is the best match they could throw together for him in the moment. They couldn't trust him in a main event spot because he didn't put the match together. They could trust him in a mid-level spot. Well, they, they, he, they couldn't put him in that spot because he did recently have a concussion. I don't know. I really, really would hate the day that Randy Orton quits wrestling because right now he's one of my favorite in-ring technicians. And... Uh, that's all I'm going to really say about that. We should move on. We should all right, let's get, to, uh, let's get to Swaggler versus Trufy. Swaggler versus Trufy. Yes, we got, we got Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler against Kofi Kingston and R-Truth. Uh, prior to this match, we learned that Jack Swaggler and Dolph Z Ziggler are, are now part of Team Laurinaitis. So Team Laurinaitis now five strong, and they end up getting the win over here with Vicky Guerrero's help. Yeah, I, I mean, again, more filler, more fluff, and uh, this was basically a yeah, bathroom break for any... I mean, it was basically a bathroom break, a continued bathroom break, as people get ready for the final uh, mm -hmm. segment. And the final segment of the show was really the whole the whole kit and caboodle here. This is what they all build up to the whole time. They only had a rock to a little segment there in the middle. They had their John and their, their, their CM Punk, their uh, Chris Jericho there at the top. And now, well, But all raw along, they are advertising, sort of building to this whole main event of the evening. HBK, Triple H, and The Undertaker all in the ring at once. Yeah, and uh, what's going to happen here? So we get to our final uh, segment of the show. We've got HBK in there. He starts the uh, segment off saying that uh, he could still be the one to end Undertaker's streak. Um, I, you know, uh, he, he leads into, I believe it was the Taker coming out next. He said you need to... Uh, Shut up. And this match needs to be pure. Pure. He said it needed to be pure. Um, he uh, he continued to say... Uh, they, they, they got it out quick that these wrestlers were just coming on down. Like So Shawn Michaels talks for a minute, Undertaker talks for a minute, and then Triple H comes out, and now we get you know the three of them in the ring together. Yeah, I mean, we could sit here and we could re, uh, you know, regurgitate words that they said. Um, but the bottom line is we just got a face off between these three guys. I bet it popped a huge uh, overrun rating for them. I don't doubt that whatsoever. Seeing those three guys on screen at the same time is definitely going to pop a big overrun rating for them. But it didn't accomplish anything. Um, other than the fact that it, it seemed to uh, dismiss the idea that HBK and Triple H were somehow in collusion together. It doesn't seem to be that way. It definitely seemed to be uh, Triple H setting HBK in his place. That this was his time to prove that he was better than uh, HBK. And uh, Undertaker put himself in the middle of that. I mean, do you, have, do, you, do you think there was much more to it than that? I, I think there were a couple of things that did get said in this segment that are worth noting. Uh, number one, Triple H brings up a really good point. There have been 24 Hell in a Cell matches, and Undertaker or and or Triple H have been involved in 19 of those. That's an interesting note. Uh, these two have really made Hell in a Cell the match that it is, and now we get to see the two confront each other in a WrestleMania uh, Hell in a Cell match. I think that's a brilliant point. Uh, the second point is as Undertaker's about ready to leave, he does say to Triple H, I know it's bothering you that, uh, uh, about this whole thing about you and Shawn Michaels and which one is better, and I can tell you right now, Shawn Michaels is better. And who would know who could make that determination better than The Undertaker? And as Undertaker's leaving on that high note, we've got a huge grin coming off of the face of, of, uh, of HBK. 
and Triple H did not take too kindly of that. And that's how we close the show. I thought that was a very interesting note. I thought that I thought that leaves a little bit of flavor into this. Uh, I, to be honest, I think this is one of the best main event builds for WrestleMania going into WrestleMania. Yeah, and you know by placing in that overrun time slot as opposed to the Rock placing in the middle there, uh, it definitely seems to show that they're trying to put a little bit more emphasis on that Hell in a Cell than Rock Cena possibly going to the second to last week. They're definitely going to put Rock and Cena in the uh, overrun next week. We'll see what happens. This was definitely a good week for the build for both. And uh, on that, can we can we move to maybe a little bit of independent wrestling? That us? rounds up Raw, everybody. We are uh, we are moving on to our uh, uh, our final segment here. This is a little teaser here at the end. This isn't going to take too long. And we, before our break, and then we're going to come back with some more stuff. Yes, we're going to come back with some more stuff. But yeah. right now, we've got something called indie shit. And in indie shit, uh, we talk a little bit about the independent. That was a fart sound from our executive producer, Drew Ask Lack Sack Sack Lack 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 Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit of indie shit right now. Actually, Nick, you wanted to highlight a match that's up and coming on the indie scenes here in Chicago. I actually have two matches that I'd like to highlight here on the indie scene if I can have a moment. The first match is at Resistance Pro Wrestling this Friday, March 23rd at the Excalibur Theater in Chicago, Illinois. It's going to feature the Almighty Sheik versus Steven Walters. Uh, just last month, the Almighty Sheik fought Steven Walters in a match where he won and threw Stephen Walters through a barricade. Um, Ronaldo Piven, a close personal friend of mine, picture right here, uh, texted me saying that he is very anxious to see how this match plays out. This is uh, this month is going to be a, a follow-up beating to Stephen Walters, uh, Ronaldo Piven says. He's going to show uh, the world who Stephen Walters really is, and that is that he is a filthy, fat American who's not uh, worthy of being in the same ring as the Syrian assassin, the Almighty Sheik. And this month, this Friday, March 23rd, uh, mm -hmm. the Almighty Sheik is going to face Stephen Walters in a Falls Count Anywhere match. That means this match can end in the fans, this, uh, this match can end at the concessions, this match could end at the bar, this match could end at the bathrooms, this, this match, match could end in the ring! This match could end any which way of Sunday. And that's going to be this Friday, March 23rd, the Almighty Sheik with Ronaldo Piven versus Stephen Walters, a match that you definitely need to check out. So you had two matches you wanted to highlight? Tonight? Yes, the other match is uh, this Saturday, March 21st, in jo uh, March 24th in Joliet, Illinois. You're going to get to see Al Snow, a legend of ECW, TNA, WWE, WWF, take on the Pro Wrestling Blitz World Heavyweight Champion, Ryan Slate, a member of the Elite, also managed by Ronaldo Piven. And uh, this is a match that's been building up for some time now. Uh, uh, just last month, Al Snow had to go through five men to try to earn this match. And he managed to, at the very last moment, pin Ryan Slade in a non-title gauntlet match. He's looking for blood. And, uh, and, and, on, a, and a, uh, on a private note about Pro Wrestling Blitz, Ronaldo Piven asked me to say uh, to you people directly that he does not wish... Uh, he does not wish... Ashton Vatan well in his future endeavors. This past month at Pro Wrestling Blitz, Ashton Vatan was released from the Elite, and he has no place in Pro Wrestling Blitz. So I'm very interested to see what he does this month at the show. And that's my indie shit for this for this week. Ah, Ashton Vatan, what you got cooking? All Ronaldo Piven shit. Isn't that surprising? Oh. It's, all, it's always surprising Who how knew? my stuff always relates to my friend. Ronaldo Piven. I don't know how. It always just comes back to that. Well, ladies and gentlemen. All right. With that, it's going to conclude the first half. But we're coming back. We're going to have some news for you. We're going to talk some TNA, TNA. It's an old classic. We know and love it. And we're going to talk about the B brand, if, uh, if, yeah, if that down. could be called. A, uh, we'll work the, the SmackDown into the news. And we're going to do some armchair booking as well. But right now, we've got a little video for you guys to watch. So uh, check this out. We'll see you here in just a second.
And welcome back to the second half of OTP, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed those commercials. Yes, those were uh, teasers for uh, Malice coming up from Pro Wrestling Blitz and Obsession from our good friends at Resistance Pro Wrestling. And now we're going to go to this, uh, this second half of the show. Some quick updates on some other goings on around the uh, world of pro wrestling. Absolutely, that's why we're going to start off with the news, here in the newsroom. Yes, oh look, there's so much activity going on around us Oh now. my god, the world is buzzing! Those for are wrestling! Those are all of our interns in the background, running important wrestling stories around for us. They're actually just kind of hanging out, chilling, very, very still. They don't move too they're much. On, they're, on, they're on pins and needles they right now. They don't know if they should move or not, yes. Uh, but yes, with all those people behind us working very hard, we have uh, assembled some very nice news topics for you to, uh, this week. Uh, at the top of it, we've got Lord Tensai. Tensei. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lord Tensei, uh, there was a, tr a teaser for him tonight on Raw, which we didn't talk about in the roundup. Uh, new character coming in. Absolutely, and we found something out today, Nick. We found out who this really is. Some of you might know him from past uh, little ring stuff called TNA. Uh, he was also in the WWE for like seven years. Yeah, well... TNA by TNA, I don't mean total non-stop action wrestling. I mean, uh, test oh. an A-train. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. That's right, yeah. That was yeah. clever. That yeah, was clever, was like yeah. Pulling some old shit out my box. Yes, for those of you that don't remember A-train, he was a very hairy fellow who would come out to the ring with Test, and uh, I think it was, uh, they were managed by Terry? Uh, no, they were they were managed by Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus, that's yeah. right. And uh, and he's, uh, you know, he left the WWE, I think it was in 2000. Five. I think it's been eight years since he's been back. Two thousand six. Could have been something like that. Feel yeah. free to fact check. Leave it in the comments. OTP Wrestling on Facebook. OTP Wrestling on Twitter. Or right here on YouTube. Uh, but he spent a lot of time in New Japan Pro Wrestling as the uh, character Giant Bernard, actually holding the New Japan Tag Titles for a long period of time. He shaved his body. He doesn't have the body hair anymore. He has a lot of tattoos. Actually, uh, I'll put up a graphic right behind us here. This is from WrestleZone. This is actually a graphic showing one of the chest tattoos of Lord Tensai. It's actually the same chest tattoo that uh, Matt Bloom A-Train has right now. So they kind of actually gave it away in the teaser trailer, but you know most people wouldn't have even picked up on that. Yep, connecting the dots here at OTP, Ooh. all for you. Yes, uh, also uh, we've got uh, Stacey Keebler possibly going to host The X Factor. Ooh, exciting. Uh, yeah, she'll be on the new singing show with uh, Simon Cowell. Uh, who knows? I don't know. Good luck to you, Stacey. She could be great. Um, also, Cody Rhodes now on Twitter tweeting to the world about his exploits. <laughs> Great. Moving on to the next topic, uh, we got Alberto Del Rio recently returning to the ring at Madison Square Garden house show. Uh, yes, uh, at, uh, uh, he returned to Madison Square Garden. I think he'd done maybe one other uh, match. Maybe it was just a segment at a house show a little before that. Um, but it's nice to see him back in the ring. I was actually reading. I don't know if I talked to you about this or not. He uh, There's reports that are thinking about teaming him with Ricardo Rodriguez, maybe bringing them back as a tag team. Hmm, that could be, be very interesting. Yeah, he got such a great reaction, Reverend. I, I do Rebel. like Ricardo Re Rodriguez. Absolutely, that was fun. Yeah, I Coming they... down, making you think uh, Alberto Del Rio's back, but it's really Ricardo Rodriguez driving his car. And I could see, uh, you know, Alberto and Ricardo having some excellent tag team matches with Epico and Primo. Just a lot of fast pace. There. A lot of Mexicans. A lot of Mexicans <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> um, also, uh, WWE has... Uh, Resigned with Liongate Film uh, to produce a few more films. One of those films definitely going to be a sequel or reboot, possibly, of the Leprechaun franchise. I don't know how I feel about this, uh, but the WWE they they realized they had maybe gold here because maybe a pot of gold. There's here? a there's a, a franchise called Leprechaun, and we've got a Leprechaun. So I don't know. Maybe Hornswoggle will start eating children and kidnapping people. It's definitely a change of pace for the better. Um, and uh, finally, uh, going uh, uh, going out on the uh, news here, I just want to say that last night's, our, our Monday night's Raw, if, if you can't tell, we had to do a bit of a, a change in clothes. This is actually taped a little bit after the first half of the show was. We can tell you that the Raw rating uh, for this past Monday night was a 3.1 with about 4.3 million viewers. Uh, another... Uh, it was kind of up and down. There weren't a whole lot of moves in the trends, uh, but the uh, overrun with Taker, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H definitely pulled in uh, close to 600,000 extra viewers at that overrun. Pretty impressive. All right. Well, I think everything HBK, uh, Triple H, and Undertaker do in the ring is pretty impressive in and of itself. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, good job, Rob. Nicely done. Um, and, uh, oh, look, my phone made a sound. That's very unprofessional. Let's move <laughs> along. Let's move along to the next segment. Oh man, it's an oldie, but it's a favorite. Uh, we're gonna do a little TNA. TNA. Yeah. That's right. And this past weekend we had Victory Road happening. 
uh, some things we liked, some things we didn't like, and we're, so we're going to do some TNA TNAs on it. Yeah, so let's start with the TNAs. These are the things that we did like in the world of TNA and TNA Impact. Uh, I'll start off by saying what I really enjoyed was, uh, and I know this is probably not something that anybody's writing home about, about Victory Road. I love that they put the uh, television title on Devon. He's definitely a character that we haven't seen on TV in a while. He's definitely a character that the crowd has obviously been wanting to see. They were chanting Devon even when Bully Ray came out to start at the beginning of the show. Uh, I was just happy to see him get it. It's going to be a big push for his character. I think he deserves it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm liking what they're doing with him in singles competition. Much better than anything the WWE ever decided to do with him in singles competition. That that So that I agree with. I also agree, too, that this is a TNA because of Big Rob and Bigger Rob. Uh, they're fun to watch. They're hilarious. They are. They are. He's got the list and everything. Um, yes, and for, for the list, by the way, uh, for those of you that don't know what that means, Bigger Rob, which is Big Rob Terry, uh, he now comes out as Ro Robbie E's bouncer, and he has something that just says the list on it. And yeah, we it's don't, his clipboard. We don't know who's it's on the list. Bedazzled, too. Uh, I don't think we're on the list. I'm pretty sure we're not on the list. I don't think anybody's on the list. How do you get on the list? Uh, maybe, maybe we can start a Twitter campaign. <laughs> Works so well for Zack Ryder. Uh, also, as a TNA, I've got to continue to give more props to Austin Aries. Another amazing performance at Victory Road. Him and Zima Ion had a great match considering the fact that they're both heels. That can be confusing a little bit. Austin Aries was playing a little bit more of a face in this match. Uh, I, I love the fact that he stopped mid-match to send a tweet, and there was actually a live tweet that went out as he sent it. it was, that was Yeah, that was a good spot. Really cool spot. I, I again, just got to... It's posted. It's posted. There you go. I'll go back to whooping Zima Ion's ass now. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was really funny. And uh, uh, also, I think we're really glad that Matt Morgan and Crimson have come to an end. I think that our long national nightmare has finally just started. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, that's really not a TNA or a TNA for me. I probably because I just don't care. Yeah, yeah. that's why I say so, it's a good thing for me. Okay, uh, one more TNA that I'd like to bring up. Probably my favorite match of the night between Ken Anderson and AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian. This match, a lot of high spots, bodies flying left and right all over the ring. Saw a lot of really cool moves from the phenomenal one. High quality match. Uh, and Very I happy with it. And uh, as we parlay into the second half of this, I will end by saying I really enjoyed the main event between Sting and Bobby Roode, but my, I'm going to start off TNAs now. Uh, uh, well, if you're going to mention Bobby Roode and Sting finishing the show, I think that's a great time to introduce TNA. TNAs. Now, uh, again, while I said the Bobby Roode-Sting match was good, they didn't get too brawly, which was, you know, I was kind of looking forward to that. Uh, but they had a really inventive finish where Sting went for the Scorpion Death Drop, knocked himself out on a steel chair accidentally, and that could have been a great way to end the match. You know, James Storm could have run out, could have stopped Bobby from, you know, con you know putting continued uh, punishment on Sting. Instead, this whole, this whole end of your show ends very confusingly. Uh, because we get, we get Sting, he's, he's done up in the corner. Bobby Roode has him beaten down. And Dixie Carter's coming into the ring trying to stop a chair shot. This whole thing just gets really confused where is Bobby Roode going to hit Dixie Carter? What's he going to do? And it turns out he's just walking back and forth looking silly for a minute. Nothing happened. Nothing really happened. Was... We didn't understand what you were trying to accomplish here. It was not very enjoyable to watch. It didn't really put any heat on it. I would have much rather enjoyed a run-in from Jay Jake Storm, Storm who yeah. fought in the very first match of the night, a quick match against Bully Ray, which he won. Very, very quickly. He so won there match. was no reason, unless uh, unless uh, James Storm just decided he was going to take the rest of the night off, go do some beer drinking, which right. I could understand. Um, but there was no reason for him not to come down and save the day, and none of that was happening, and we just fade to black, and that's the end of your pay-per-view. Uh, also, I'm going to say there was a little exchange backstage between Jeremy Borash and Eric Bischoff, where Eric Bischoff basically told Jeremy Borash to pound sand because he didn't belong in an interviewing capacity. He wasn't a very good interviewer. It was all based off a little Twitter exchange where Bischoff was drunk at a bar, and he said something negative. I never actually got to see the tweet. It was deleted pretty quickly. I'm told it had something to do with how Jeremy wasn't uh, professional or, or didn't belong. It was negative, you know? And they're just trying to appeal to an extra maybe two dozen people that got that inside joke like us, you know? I, I just didn't see... I don't see the benefit in it, you know? Um... Yeah, I don't see the benefit in much things, Eric Bischoff, these days. Yeah, it's it's really it's been negative, and and kind of on a split note, some people have loved the Twitter integration, some people have hated. I'm kind of on the fence. You know, at the time, I really, I thought it was a great idea how they're interacting. They're they're bringing a lot of focus to the brand. They're getting you know people interested. Are they going to read my tweet on the air? Uh, kind of now that I look at it, it does look maybe like they're trying to be a little too much like the WWE. Well, it's just so much, and it just seems so forced. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's really all I need to say about I, that. I don't hate it so much, but it did 
deserve in the back half and the front half. I uh, I actually don't have too many more negatives. I thought it was a pretty decent uh, decent pay per view. Overall, over. overall, this was a solid pay per view for TNA. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good job, well okay. done. Uh, so let's move past this now. To our final segment of the show. Oh boy. This has been an oldie but a goodie. I'm sure you're all looking forward to it with pins and needles. It's time right now for us to do a little armchair, armchair booking. booking. Uh, so what are we going to armchair book this week, Darren? Uh, I think we're going to armchair book next week's Raw. Oh, there, Nick. That's right. That's right. So we're going to tell you right now what we would like to see happen at next week's Raw leading into WrestleMania. Uh, what's one thing you want to see happen, Darren? Well, obviously, this is going to be the last Raw going into WrestleMania, so we need to flesh out a couple of things concerning Team Long, Team Teddy. Team Teddy, Long, Team John Laurinaitis. Right. That's what I meant. That's yeah. right. All right. We get it. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to see this all come to the surface a little bit more. Maybe we get to see the full roster of six versus six. Right now, we're almost all the way there, but seeing as how we've got Alberto Del Rio making it in the wings, return, yeah, he could be coming back next week. Could he be on Team Laurinaitis, Team hey. Johnny? And then who's to say Rey Mysterio doesn't run in and join Team Long? You know, they've got a lot of history there. That makes a lot of sense for each of them to pick up a slot. I'm seeing Zack Ryder in there. Yeah, and we all, you know, we did talk quite a bit about this match during last uh, week's mm -hmm. um deal like who was going to be in this thing somebody that's come in completely off my radar and nick maybe you can speak better to this but sin cara where is he at where is he been uh he's not supposed to be back uh for another three months okay. he fucked himself up so bad uh at that i'm trying to remember the, it was i think it was a raw he like a, a he tried to jump out of the ring over the top rope he didn't get caught or something like that but it's like a nine month injury i don't think he's gonna be back next okay. week I just all right see it fair happen. enough Fair enough. But I'm, I'm excited to see what kind of faces we can put in this match. Aside from the obvious great Kali, I'm not looking forward to, to whatever he does at WrestleMania. Here's what I'm thinking. They're going to finish announcing who's in the match, and then they're going to do a battle royal with all 12 competitors for the last show. They can't do the six on six, but they can do a battle royal. They can get everybody mixed up, you know. Maybe start some little feuds within the battle royal. There's a lot of ways you can go with that. That's something I'd like to see. Something else that I'd like to see also is... Uh, I want to see a Piper's Pit. You know, Roddy, Roddy Piper had yeah. put out the idea of uh, doing a final Piper's Pit before WrestleMania with John Cena and The Rock. I say go for it. You know, P Roddy Piper has done so many great segments over the past uh, you know, few years when he's come in to really hype uh, events. I think that that's the best place to have these two finish up their road to WrestleMania. You know, obviously, aside from WrestleMania itself. Let Roddy Piper throw a little bit more fuel on the fire with these two. Well, I will say, every time Roddy Piper's on WWE television, I can't get enough. The man has so much fiery passion, and he does wonders on the mic that a lot of people could learn from. Uh, so, please, yeah, give me some Piper on there. And we haven't seen Mick Foley yet. Uh, Mick Foley, a man who is who has tons of history. Triple H retired Mick Foley in a Hell in a Cell. And, of course, I mean, we don't even need to talk about the Mick Foley Undertaker Hell in a Cell, which is... Probably the Hell in a Cell match to watch. If you haven't seen the Undertaker versus Mankind Hell in a Cell match from 1998 King of the Ring, you're missing out. This is match of matches. The brutality, I've never seen anything quite like it. Well, uh, Royal Rumble between Rock and Mick Foley is equally brutal for a variety of reasons. But anyway, anyway, uh, I, I just I hope that they can bring in Mick to really cut that one awesome promo to really put over this match, how dangerous it is, how dangerous these two men are, I, I think that would be the little icing on the cake for this. Uh, it very well could be. It could be. Um, I mean, I really like the way this is all starting to play out. Who knows? Who uh, knows what this, who knows what little last little interjection needs to happen to make this thing just that much better. Um, is there anything that can be done to make us interested in Kane versus Randy Orton? No. I don't think so either. No. I don't think so either. Um, what else do we have on the card? Uh, Big Show Cody Rhodes, what can they do to put a little fire on that one? I mean, I have liked what they what Cody Rhodes has done so far with all these WrestleMania moments and really getting under Big Show's skin. Uh, you know, oh boy, man, I really want to start making some WrestleMania predictions. No, that's, that's not, next week! That's not where we're going with this. Uh, perhaps if they're going to try to put a little heat on this uh, going into WrestleMania, uh, I, I think that Cody needs to do something big to embarrass Big Show. Just really, you know, last week he, you know, he handcuffed him to the lower ropes, you know, he boxed him like Floyd Mayweather style. I think we're going to see one more thing like that. You know, maybe where he knocks him out and puts him in a, a diaper, kind of like when he sumo wrestled or something like that. <laughs> but I don't see Big Show getting the upper hand on Cody Rhodes. I see that this continuing to build next week with one more huge thing to just piss off Big Show that much more. 
so that when WrestleMania comes, you can't wait to see him just flatten Cody Rhodes. Yeah, it'll feel a little bit like uh, Big Boss Man versus uh, Big Show when that match happened. Sure. Um, yeah, who knows? Um, anything else? Are we are we neglecting it? Uh, CM Punk, Jericho, is there anything there you want to see? Uh, well, I would like them to start making this match more about the title, not about CM Punk's Family. drunken, druggy family issues. It, you know, but if he really wants to push the issue, I think you're right. I think he brings up his mom. Maybe even brings in his mom. You know, and his mom comes out and is like, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm so sad that you were so much like your father. You know, I'm gonna side oh. with Chris Jericho. I, you know, this is, no, this match should be about the biggest prize in the industry, the WWE Championship, not about, I mean, I get that you want to play some mind games, and you should, but I think this is just the wrong thing to make this whole segment about. Um, and uh, lastly, um, you've got the best in the world going against the best in the world at what I do. Right. Yeah, I mean, this should this should have been enough. So it sells itself, but, uh, and then finally, and I, I know we're, we're short on time here, Seamus Daniel Bryan. Uh, again, much like Cody Rhodes, I see uh, maybe Seamus not getting the upper hand, Daniel Bryan doing one more dastardly thing. Uh, maybe maybe slaps AJ in the face after she costs him a match or something. Everybody's just like, oh, now he's a wife beater. I can't wait to watch the Seamus beat him up. The Seamus. I can't wait to watch the Seamus I mean, beat I, him I see over. that kind of happening uh, at some point. I think it's a little quick and too much of a swerve to do uh, on the last show before WrestleMania. Sure. I don't know. It, it could happen. It could happen. All right. Well, we're all out of time here for the second half of the show. Uh, be sure to check us next week. We'll have our video up here hopefully next Wednesday, just like we do this week. Um, uh, this has been Darren Fentress. My name is Nick Hausman. You can follow us on Twitter at OTP Wrestling, and you can follow us on Facebook.com slash OTP Wrestling. And that's going to do it for this week's show. We hope you've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed it, and we will see you next week with a brand new bum 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 OTP Wrestling Last one before WrestleMania, so it's the last little bit of road you're gonna get from us. It might be a little bit longer, that's about a full hour to fill in. Oh man, we have a lot we wanna say. Alright, well thank you guys again so much and uh, we will catch you next week.